in Shoreham, Vermont, the home of Whistle Pig Whiskey. The goal of this newcomer to the whiskey industry is to be the first farm to bottle rye whiskey brand made all in the United States since Prohibition. We started in the middle of the most severe recession uh, in, uh, in the country's recent history. So you could get a lot of stuff done for less. There wasn't that much work going on. So from A to Z, you could get quick turns on everything at reasonably low prices. If you look at companies that start in the depths of a recession where resources are tight and you have to make uh, decisions which would result in near-term revenue, you have much stronger companies because they were born in the baptism of, of fire. Frequently, companies that start in severe recessions tend to be around long for a lot longer that start at the frothy tops of booms. There are times as an entrepreneur when you stake your own ground and say, I'm going to uh, create a business myself, I'm going to work for myself, where you stare at some dark, dark chasms, some, some cold, lonely nights when you alone believe in the vision. Uh, that you're pursuing and your net uh, payables to net receivables on a 30-day basis make you entirely insolvent. And yet there's something that says, you know, go on, uh, this will work. And I think that's what separates entrepreneurs from others. It's the ability to take risk. As you learn from your failures, you're able to better calculate what risks to take and when to really hold on. In its core, you know, being an entrepreneur is based on a firm conviction that I can do it. I can make something happen. I can make something work. You know that it's make or break, do or die. Actually, the area began uh, with this river that's frozen over now. There used to be a couple of grist mills uh, in here that kept a, a little uh, hamlet, as they called it, alive uh, with the buzzing of saws and the grinding of grain that was powered off of the, off of the river in, in summertime. And uh, now we're sort of bringing this area back to life after it was a failed dairy farm in the form of what will hopefully be the country's uh, first and finest uh, uh, farm-based distillery. You know, the skeptics be damned. Uh, and you'll carry through to the end to make that work. What sounds the piggy make? <laughs> I'm Kat Clifford with Entrepreneur. we have here this is just a kind of a basic dental light that basically kind of hovers over every chair and very important again to creating more high visibility um, and the, the light is very very bright so when shined on the patient's mouth it can illuminate it to a very great factor that we can see things that we wouldn't normally be able to see without when I graduated dental school I actually didn't really know where my career path led I didn't know if I wanted to specialize I didn't know if I wanted to work in a hospital, I didn't know if I wanted to be in private practice. So my first job was actually joining the military. Um, one thing nice about the military was you didn't really have to make any sort of commitments to what you wanted to do in dentistry. And I knew that I did not know where I wanted to be. I didn't know where I wanted to live. And I certainly didn't want to know, I didn't know if I wanted to just practice general dentistry or specialize. So my career path basically took me in the military where I could become a general dentist do a little bit of traveling and then certainly get a little bit of exposure to all the different facets of dentistry. Once I left the military, um, I decided that I wanted to go into private practice. I wanted to basically have my own business. I wanted to be able to get in a situation where I could set my own hours. I would determine my earning potential. Um, I certainly wanted to be the one that dictates my vacations. And so what I did was when I separated, I purchased um, an existing dental practice and it's from there that I basically started to build a practice that of my own that I could kind of set you know, all my priorities straight and kind of get the business to how I wanted it to run. I went and pursued the military because I didn't know exactly where I wanted to practice and I didn't even know what I wanted to do in dentistry. Um, my opportunity to practice in the military gave me exposure to a lot of different disciplines of dentistry and also put me in scenarios that were much different than you'd see in a pri private practice outcome. So, for me, it was just an issue of getting some more experience and exposure to kind of guide me into, you know, what kind of dentist that I wanted to be. In the military, certainly, you know, um, 
we, we primarily deal with people that you know deploy and, and go to war. So certainly the, the treatment scenarios that we can present to them are much different than in private practice because there's a lot more limitations. For example, someone who may need something really co complicated that's cosmetic, they may not necessarily have time to get something like that because of their availability. Where in private practice, basically the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you want to do or whatever the patient wants to do. So in terms of flexibility, you know, there's a lot less flexibility in the military as far as the treatment options you can present and basically the access and availability to care. Um, certainly, you know,